people even gonna notice if we just kind of sneak in like this? No one hears it. Are we even here? Vantage F1 edition. <laughs> I should probably turn on the engine just because people don't even know we're behind them. Hey crew, I've got the key to that Ferrari SF90 Spider, and we are gonna see what it's like to live with on the weekend. So you can see I've got it plugged in here. It was charging up overnight, which is way more time than it actually needs to top up that smallish battery. And now before we head out, let's take a look at how the SF90 Spider looks in the driveway. And that is to say, gorgeous, but I mean dimensionally. So I've got it parked pretty close to the side of the drive, angled ever so slightly around that bush. And it is sitting next to a 24 Volkswagen Atlas which has the back tire kind of hanging off a little bit here. This is what my wife is reviewing right now. And as you'll see, we've got a nice alley between the two cars. So it's not overly wide such that you necessarily need to do that, you'd think. But actually when I go to open up the door, you'll see why this space is necessary. And before we get inside, you can see that my driveway has a bit of a lip to it for water to run through. And that would be a problem for this vehicle if it didn't have the front end lift, which is activate, actually it's down right now, but it lifts the vehicle up so we can clear this easily if you don't have something like curb ramps. But interestingly, that is an option on this vehicle at $600,000. Why is that not included? No one is going to buy an SF90 and not equip the hydraulic front lift. So now here is the first notch of opening the door. And as you can see, I could get in, but that would be kind of awkward. So really I need to open it the second notch and have it just nestle gently against the plastic cladding of this vehicle. Cause now I've got a good access point. I can use the bolster to lower down onto the sill and then duck my head in and squeeze on over. Then closing the door. Well, like that thud. Hey, cabin crew, thank you for joining me for this drive in a weekend edition of Day in the Life with the Ferrari SF90. So here inside the cabin, I'm just going to tab the start stop button once. Man, those chimes are so loud. It's a cool activation on the digital gauge cluster. The vehicle is actually not even ready to go at this point. It's in an accessory mode. I'd have to hit the start stop button one more time and then you hear that and you know it's good to go. It's starting up silently. So that hum is all your neighbors are going to hear, if at all, as you wake this 986 horsepower supercar. That's just kind of crazy to me. And right now it's in the hybrid drive mode. And as I throw in my belt here, I'll tab it into the electric drive mode, which changes up the gauge cluster a little bit. And then to go into first gear, just pull on that right paddle to disengage the parking brake. You press forward on that tab and head on out. Now, before I go over this lip, I will point out that I do have the front end lift up. So I have plenty of clearance to sneak on out. Now, before I get too far out of the area, I do wanna pull over here and just note that we've got 15 miles of all electric range according to the car, but that's really on the Euro testing cycle. Here in the US, that would equate to eight miles of electric range, which is surely enough to get you out and back into your neighborhood silently. But beyond that, you are gonna to wanna to activate the gas engine. So if you leave it in hybrid, it's just gonna zap that electric energy. But if you go into the performance mode, it will then turn on that gas motor, which can work to charge back up the battery if you want it to. And now let's listen for the turn signal sound and the signals are right here on the wheel, no stock behind them. That's, that's pretty loud, even over the sound of that twin turbo V8 now going and the turning radius. That'll do just fine. What I don't love in terms of visibility here in the SF90 is that if I was to go into reverse, pulling back, that's gonna bring up your backup camera here in the screen. It is very high resolution, but two things. One, that kind of annoying chime is always going. And two, the camera is so low that I actually don't have great perspective on anything. I just see 
a lot of the road surface and it is bisected every time I turn the wheel. And there is a blind spot here right at the passenger side seat and the pillar with the cowl coming up. Now enjoying a supercar is something you can certainly do alone, but I think it's better with company. So I've got my friend Patrick here who has also filmed some videos for miles per hour before. He's gonna be joining me on our sojourn to a cars and coffee event. The South OC Cars and Coffee is I think the biggest weekly cars and coffee event in the world perhaps, but certainly in the US. So it's gonna be a good stage to bring such a special car as this one. And on our way there, I'm gonna move it back into the hybrid mode so that we can attempt to maximize some fuel economy. And let's talk a little about the around town comfort here, which I find to be excellent. You're going over these bumps and you're certainly moving around, but the imperfections aren't really rattling you. And so you stay comfortable. And here in this hybrid mode, it's really cool because the gas center will just turn off like a start stop system but then it stays off until you give it too much throttle and then it kicks back on. But when it does kick on, for one, yeah, you hear it, but you don't really feel that abrupt movement of that gas motor now engaging. And the throttle response stays very smooth. Brakes are easy to adjust. There's no real regen braking coming into play, so it's just slowing with the friction brakes there. So now we're on the highway and humming along effectively silently right now. In fact, hearing some noise, there's tire noise going on, there's road noise, little bit of wind noise, not too much. It's a very aerodynamic shaped vehicle. You're on the electric mode right now. But yeah, right wow. now, I mean, it's, it's, I'm in hybrid mode, but you can uh, okay, feel wow. like you can see the boost going. I can work up to 80 miles per hour just as a front drive vehicle. So just as a front drive electric vehicle right now, up to 80 miles per hour. Of course, if I can give it too much throttle, the gas engine will kick on, picking up quite a bit of velocity whenever you want to. I can have the vehicle start to charge that electric battery if I need that range for later use because you can see it just dwindling quick. I think it was at 12 miles only about a minute ago and it just zaps so fast in electric drive mode. That's why I find myself just putting it back in performance to maintain that battery. Now a little water is falling from the sky and being kicked up by vehicles who are driving over it. So I think this is a good opportunity to show you the windshield wipers. So you can just tap the back of the steering wheel once to get them going there, or it can move it into auto mode and it senses the water on the windshield. And I do like the single trigger, just one wipe. I prefer the signals on the wheel and I prefer that one wipe because so many different systems in, uh, in regular vehicles, you gotta toggle it on or off to get it to do one wipe. But this is so thoughtful. Really? Oh yeah, like the, the even just the action of clicking this. I haven't even got into pulling the paddles on the wheel, but just doing this once, it's very satisfying. You can raise or lower the top up to 30, maybe 31 miles per hour. So let's do that now, because I think we're clear on rain. Light. And that is down. What's it feel like, Patrick? Does it feel good? good yeah, it feels pretty darn good. People even gonna notice if we just kind of sneak in like this? No one hears it. Are we even here? Here we go, I think we're gonna get front row access. Good morning. Morning, let's see, what do we got here? Vantage F1 edition. <laughs> I should probably turn on the engine just because people don't even know we're behind them. Just wish I had a better sight line here. I'm not gonna to go too far back because I don't wanna hit that curb and that'll do it. And we're here. All right, both paddles in for neutral and off. We made it. Car wash mode activated. <laughs> Some other Italian royalty pulling up next to us. Now, as we get out here, here's one of the irritants. So I mentioned about the door opening. 
I don't know how close that 911 is exactly. So I'm gonna have to kind of work my way to the back end of the door and then hold on the bolster to pull on out. Don't look as cool, but you know what, the car makes up for it. Fits right in. How many looks you got in this thing so far? You, you should do like a look counter. A look counter? Yeah, oh, it's so funny. It's yeah. a good idea. I mean, <laughs> if I were doing it right now, it'd be like ding, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. going off all the time. By the end of a uh, ton of people. <laughs> it's funny because like I actually don't love attention, mm. right? So like driving around to something like this makes me a little uncomfortable, but well, it's fun to kind of get it here and park it and let people enjoy it. Growing up, I was always told that you know people who have these type of cars and stuff are kind of like to themselves. They don't really care about people like us. And stuff, but, <laughs> When, like people having I am like people this. like us, yeah, so it's yeah. like, <laughs> but, like but, you know, like having a meet like this is like super cool because like I, for some of us we never even been this close to one. You know what I mean? Yes. So it's like so you're right, you're right about that. Yeah. yeah, well, it was funny because I, I said this in my Storado video that I haven't released yet, but it was like, if you buy something like this, you have to keep in mind that people are gonna ask you questions all the time. Mm -hmm. So if you're uncomfortable with that, you really should keep that in mind if you're even thinking about buying it. Maybe don't buy something like that, yeah. or at least if you're gonna drive it, you have to. You just have to put that hat on of going like, hey, it's time to be patient with people. It's time to just see, that, see the car through their eyes and get excited with them. Because if not, like why are you even driving it? Like why did you yeah. ever get excited about it, you know? Yeah. I'm reviewing it, yeah. I have one of those, I don't know how to use it. Oh, really? Yeah. I oh. got mine, it's a Sesto, Coriano. Uh, okay. But uh, I haven't tried it here yet, but uh, I don't know how to use it. So, yeah. Is there a special tutorial, video or something? Um, I'm going to make a video on this car, and so you can watch the video and I'll, I'll talk you through it. But I can show you right now if you want to see. So you can leave it in hybrid mode, but if you, if you hit this, then it's going to go to the E-Drive mode. Hit this one, it'll turn on the gas engine. Uh -huh. So that turns okay. on the gas engine and it can go back to these other modes. This is the qualifier mode, so this uh -huh. is all the power all the time. I know this car is so freaking fast. Yes. It might hit, hurt somebody. On that thing right here, button, what would you got a sport? You leave on a sport or what? So this is the traction control system, so you can have it in wet mode, in sport. When do you use wet mode? Uh, I, when it's raining and you want just okay. that, it, it, then it's extra safe. So it's okay. it's gonna be using, the traction control system is gonna intervene a lot. Battery train out, you can't drive the car or what? When it drains, yes, you can absolutely drive it because then it just becomes a gas engine vehicle. So the SF90 Spider was enjoying the spotlight here at the show for a short period of time, but uh, there's a Senna that's on its way in, followed by a Bugatti Chiron. It is a GTR. Yeah, game over. This one won. This is actually a great chance to just take a look at the SF90 Spider's exterior and just size it up. So for one, compared to a 296 GTB, this is gonna be a little bit longer and a little bit wider. And you can see that length looking at this car, the nose just juts out so much. The front overhang is kind of wild here. The Spider look is incredible. It just looks one level up over the coupe. I love the cowls behind each passenger the little glass cover for the engine bay. That engine is really tucked down in there, probably just getting reflection right now, but that's where the twin turbo V8 is. We have these carbon fiber accents around the inlets that are gonna cool that V8. Someone's revving a Mustang GT, big surprise, big surprise. And then this front inlet is going to cool the two front electric motors at each wheel. This duct right here under the LED headlights is for the brake cooling. These are 20 inch forged alloy wheels. And what I like about these are the little fins inside them. Carbon ceramic brakes are standard on this car as they should be. With this much power, you need to be able to stop it well. And another cool thing in the exterior. So the spoiler, typically air is gonna pass underneath it and over the prancing horse, but when more downforce is needed, this piece will descend and create some of that drag. That's over these two center exit exhausts that are on this model, titanium, and this very impressive double cowl diffuser portion. 
It's just a special looking car. Looking at this cabin, I mean, there's nice bits of carbon fiber, leather all over the place in two tones. Your climate control system's here, this passenger screen, you haven't gotten to play with it yet, but you can watch all of my performance uh -huh. data while that's going on. And uh, carbon fibers on this tunnel area. This is really cool. This area is designed to look like the old gated manual Ferraris. Uh, but instead is just working your automatic for manual function. Nice meeting you. And uh, this is how you go in reverse. You pull back on that and you press forward on that when the conditions are met for performance start. Leave quietly and slowly. Okay. That's crazy. Just following instructions. We showed off the cars. Now it's time to get the coffee. So it's in the qualifier we go. pulling those paddles. <laughs> Front electric motor is just gripping in, pulling you, and then that twin turbo V8 shoving the back end. G force. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Fantastic noise. All right, we've just about made it here to one of my favorite coffee shops. So we've got to find a parking space. Okay, this is going to turn into a parallel parking demonstration. I'm going to try to look, which actually the rear deck lid's pretty high. So, we're gonna use some mirror action, combined with the backup camera, and combined with some parking sensors. Right door mirror, down. There we go. And, straighten out. Hey, hey, look, it wasn't the tightest parallel parking space, but I think we did pretty well. Okay, so this is what we're looking at here. A pretty big space, yes, but, for a one go, I'm happy with that parking job. Not easy to park, but you can do it in the SF90 Spider. Now, one of the reasons this is one of my favorite coffee shops is because one of my favorite people works here. This is Steven. Hey, Steven, how you doing? Can I have the usual? Oh, yes, finally. It's been like five hours. Your 10 pump, 20 quadruple pump calamity in a cup. I feel like this has changed since when I ordered it. No, it's the exact same thing that you've ordered every single time. Okay, all right. Oh my gosh, it's heavy. Yeah. Oh, it's delicious. As usual, yeah. you make such great coffee. Thank you, thank you. The whole team, honestly, the whole team. Great work, great work, everyone. I thought, okay. All right, so I got my coffee and my little baked good. And as I was walking back out to the SF90, I saw this gorgeous Alpha Spider parked right behind it. Which Italian would you choose? this $670,000 one, or what I'm certain is probably a fifteen dollars to $20,000 spider. I'd take this one. Awesome car. <laughs> now, thankfully, unlike the Huracan Storado that I had a cup from Chick-fil-A and had nowhere to put it, we do have a cup holder here in the SF90 Spider and the sides are really tight on it, so I don't think this is going anywhere. Now, as we amble about town, I wanted to take a sec to address this cabin in, in greater depth, and particularly all of the screens and the touch sensitive icons. And I know that's on purpose to have this minimalism approach to it, but for example, these touch sensitive icons that aren't even on until I hit this button, and then even doing that. Sometimes there's a delay and you may want to do something right away, change some of the settings, and you don't have that physical input. I appreciate that some things are physical, like the wiper settings and the turn signals, of course, and the light settings, traction control system and suspension settings, but I, I would like to see more well thought out, beautiful analog interactions. In particular, settings you're going to interact with all the time, like the climate controls, and your door mirror adjustments, I think those should be physical. Now, let's move into the race setting of traction control. 
and performance mode. See how the handling feels. It just sticks so darn well. It can use all of that power getting out of the curb. <laughs> Tons of grip. The Cup 2 tires certainly have a part to play in that. But the four driven wheels, those electric motors at the front end, just have tons of traction up there. And then that twin turbo V8 is utilized so well through the back tires. Cruising on the highway with the top down and the windows up and this little piece of back glass down that you can't raise up as well. With the sun shining. There's not much wind buffeting at all. The moving air inside this cabin has been quelled considerably by the large windows, by that back glass piece. So there's not that thump, thump, thump noise. Makes for an excellent convertible. And a very enjoyable cruiser. As a parting gift for Patrick, we should do a real world zero to 60 test. To prep for that, I'm gonna take the Manatino into race mode, the E-Manatino into qualifier mode, then I've gotta go into manual mode and then hit the PS button when we're ready before launch, holding my foot on the brake, I'll pin the throttle, build up the revs and let it go. All right, performance starting it. Holding it, letting it go, oh! <laughs> 2.5 seconds to 60. Absurd, come on. Now, most likely an SF90 Spider actual owner would have spent much of the afternoon shopping at very fancy stores, not getting groceries at Trader Joe's, but you know what? That's what we're doing today because it's a day in my life, not their life. So let's see how the SF90 Spider accommodates some groceries. Tap this button twice. That will release the front trunk and give us three cubic feet of space dispersed in a very shallow shelf way. And we do have some, I think there's a car cover and some tools and the manual in there. So we'll see how we can get around these things, placing things like that and my single bag of groceries on its side with nothing terribly fragile inside. Oh, except for those chips. Let's see, is this gonna close? This does have a cut out there, so let's see. Is it gonna close okay? It did! We'll see how many chips are crushed into a million pieces when I get there. But hey, it can handle a single bag of groceries. And speaking of storage and things that fit just right, this gorgeous key with the prancing horse on the front and leather on the back slots in in a display case sort of way right here just in front of the console. That makes me feel special. Now I do have one more errand to run before I fuel up for the date night I plan to have with my wife this evening. And that is to pick up some pizza for my kiddos. And I've been backing into a lot of parking spaces, but now I'm gonna try going in front ways, but the nose of the SF90 sticks out so far that I'm so scared to get too close and do some real damage to this vehicle. Even with the nose lifted and all that junk, a front facing camera would be very helpful because parking sensors are good, but I just don't trust them with a vehicle like this. Heck, not just front facing camera, let's do a surround view camera like I've got my CT5V Blackwing. So when you're pulling into your garage, you're sure of how much space exactly you have on the sides of your tires and out front and out back. All right, got the pizza here and we know it's not gonna fit in the front trunk with the single bag of groceries. So it's just gonna have to sit in the passenger seat. And if I had a passenger, they'd be holding a pie. One other point on this front end lift, which again, I think should be mandatory and is now activated. And that is that if you're going at speeds over 25 miles per hour, the nose won't actually lift. And that means that if you're coming up to a steeper driveway and you need that nose to be raised, for you to make it in, for you to clear that long snout, 
and you're really gonna have to scrub speed before that entrance. So you gotta be aware that if people are coming up quick behind you, you need to start braking much, much earlier than, for example, I know Porsche's lift system can work up to speeds of 35 miles per hour. That gives you a bit more grace, not as hastily will you need to slow down before you can activate that. Now we need to add a little bit of gas to the SF90's fuel tank before I gather my wife for our date. And I showed you at the beginning of this drive that the charge board door is on the left. There's another door and that is the fuel door on the right. And the fuel tank in the SF90 Spider is 15 gallons, which at the 18 combined MPG rating, according to the EPA, that would give us 270 miles on a tank. Of course, the MPGE rating is much higher at 51, which would be over 700 miles, but that's, that's not realistic. You're not always gonna have charge in the battery that you didn't put there from driving the vehicle and using the fuel tank. And according to current fuel prices of 577 for premium, that would be 15 gallons, five to $86. All right, we are all gassed up. So it's time to go get my date. All right, the sun has gone down and we have gone out, my lovely wife and I. You're so tolerant of me wearing a camera on my head. I promise I won't wear it for the entire time that we're on our date. I promise I won't flash you with the uh, iPhone lights the entire time either. This is just temporary, okay? Yeah. Is that all right? I mean, five years in, I, uh, I expect this. You expect it, yeah. Love you. So let's wrap up on the Ferrari SF90 Spider. what it's like to live with, how I used it today, apart from maybe a lack of Gucci or Louis Vuitton shopping, is perhaps how someone might, which is taking it to a Cars and Coffee event, going and getting coffee, hanging out with a friend, and taking it on a date. The things that I commented on as being nuisances, like for example, all of the chimes that it makes and how loud they are, you commented on it too. The seats being a little tight for me, but you I said like you said they're not a problem. I'm very comfortable in this. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I guess I just have a weird body type, guys. I'm <laughs> not all that swole or anything. I don't know why my my back is I don't like. Know why you're having a problem? I'm having a problem. I feel <sighs> like compared to other supercars, this is very comfortable. Well, the ride, the ride is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, the ride compliance is phenomenal. It's one of my favorite things about this vehicle. The front is a little bit small if you plan on doing a lot of shopping and your visibility, right? The high deck lid, that cowl right there, the lack of surround view camera system, which may be available, I'm not sure, but it's not here equipped on this car. All those things are overwhelmed though by the fact that this is just a showstopper of an incredible looking vehicle. It drew quite the crowd at the Cars and Coffee event and it is unbelievably fast. Two and a half seconds, just real world pulling up at a stoplight and blasting that two and a half seconds to 60 is insane. And then the way this all wheel drive system puts the power down is mind bending. And then there's that seamless integration of electric and internal combustion power where you are just coasting in and out of your neighborhood silently, not disturbing anyone, and then just fire on that gas engine and have access to all of the 986 horsepower. This is a mega car. It's very easy to live with as a weekender, as that just pride and joy that we're enjoying on our date, or we will be, as yeah, soon as I'm I like, turn oh, off the camera. The well, I hope at least some people enjoyed this day in the life video with the Ferrari SF90 Spider. If you did, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell to get notified, and I will see you again next time. And blast off! <laughs>